Okay, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how this new tricks works with getting different items from the bomb bag chest into Dungo's cavern. So let's. So I'm, I'm using Spectrum. But I'm going to link a video about what this is and how to use it. But it's essentially a tool made by MZX that allows you to see what actors and the actor files are loaded in the room that you're currently in. By pressing Enter, I can update it, and it will show me what's currently loaded and where they're loaded. Uh, so, what do we want to do? Well, the concept comes down to the thing that Link's holding in his hands. So when Link's holding something in his hands, the holding animation is trying to look at the position in memory of that actor, that thing that he's holding. And it's going to try and write to that actor to update its x, y, z position every frame. And so every frame, the x, y, z position of this bomb is updating to be above Link's head. And that's what gives the illusion that Link's carrying it. But of course, uh, we don't want to just carry an object, we want to update something else. And we can do that by having an object that Link's carrying unload, and then we can load something else in, in memory in the, uh, the address that that object that he was carrying used to be at so that when the holding animation updates what it thinks is the XYZ of the bush every frame is actually updating some other variables within the new object, the new actor that we've spawned in in the bush's place. Uh, so exactly what we want to do is we want the bush here to be the thing that Link's carrying and then we want to unload the room and reload the room and have the bomb chest spawn in roughly where the bush was the first time around. So essentially we want to go into the room, pick up the bush, leave the room, re-enter the room, and this time the chest is has spawned in where the uh, bush used to be. Um, <coughs> so how do we do that? Um, and it's a little bit tricky as you can see this is the actor instance for the bush. It's sort of near the start of the room at this address. This is the actor instance for the chest. It's sort of near the end. So they're actually kind of far apart from each other. So, and, and this bush is always going to try and load at the start of the room, and this chest is always going to try and load at the end of the room. In fact, everything in the room will try to load in the same order if it can. Um, if, if there's just like an, a, a blank bit of space for it all to load in, it will all load in the same order. So how do we get the bush to appear somewhere far forward the first time, which is what we're going to do. We're going to push the everything forward so that the bush is now down here, and then we're going to reload the room with things not pushed forward so that everything shunts back up again, and the chest is where the bush used to be. How do we do that? Uh, well, the, the we do that by spawning in a bunch of stuff. So let me show you. If we go back into the first room, the first room is loaded very early in memory, as early as it can, and it's all next to each other nicely with no gaps. And everything is loaded up to this point here, um, and then there's a few other stuff that is aligned to the very end of memory, uh, which is a few act active files. So how do we how do we shift the stuff in the second room forwards? Well, it's actually quite simple. When you go start going into the second room, and the second room loads, it all loads immediately after the first room. You know, it's all here. So, how do we shift this stuff forward? Well, we simply make sure that we simply make sure that when we load the second room, there's more stuff that's appeared here. So you'll see the room currently ends here at this object. If I drop two bombs, for example, then there are some bombs tagged onto the end of the first room. And when I load the next room, the next room is going to be pushed forward slightly because it's going to have to spawn and everything's going to have to spawn in after these bombs. Uh, so I go into the second room and you can see that the bombs are here and all this stuff has been pushed forward slightly. And so we want to do that and we want to push it forward far enough so that the thing that used to be the chest, or the thing that used to be the bush is now the chest. So uh, let's work out how far forward we need to push it. Now the position we want, so if the, if the second time we load the room the chest is going to be in its normal position, it's going to be at 1F0640. 
uh, we want to actually edit at the address 1f0630 because if we were to edit 1f0640 we would be editing the position data of the chest Link would be holding the chest above his head which is cool but not what we want we want to update different variables so we want actually the pointer to be at 1f0630 um, currently it is at the bush sorry is at 1e 8dc0 and that's with no like pushing shenanigans going on I just loaded the room normally so what is the difference between this value and the value we want or well, we can calculate that uh, the difference is going to be so we want it at 1f uh, 06 1f0630 and it is currently at uh, 1e8dc0 and so the difference is this much uh, 780 or 7870. Uh, how do we do that? How do we push it forward that much? Well, I will release a list of this, but this is how much space objects that we can spawn in will take up in memory, and this is all in hex. So we can use some combination of these objects, and hopefully it will add up to this number here. Um, that way we can be in the first room, spawn in the, the combination of those objects, and then load the second room, and everything will get shift forward the exact amount we need. Um, and I'm going to quickly show you an image that I made in, in Paint, um, which shows roughly what we want to do. It's, it's essentially what I've been explaining. You might want to pause the video and have a look at this. Um, but this is, this is the gist. Uh, so, it turns out, I figured out that this combination here, produces the shift that we want. And let's just quickly go through that. So when you load an object, it needs to, or an actor, it needs to load the actor file. So if I pull out a bomb chew, it needs to load the actor file for the bomb chew, which takes up this much space. And then it will load the bomb chew itself. Um, obviously if you want more than one chew, it only needs the actor file once. So it would spawn in the actor file and then two bomb chews. And I can, why don't I just go ahead and show you that. So, so normally the room ends here. I'm gonna spawn two bomb shoes and, and update it. And you can see here is the actor file for the bomb chew, and then here is two bomb shoes. And we wanna we wanna essentially fill up this space using actor files and actor instances. And I'm gonna let these not make that annoying noise. So the combination is two bugs, two fish, the active file for the bomb chew, and one bomb. So, let's go through that. Two bugs, uh, the active file for the bug is going to be loaded first, so 2550, 2550, um, and then we're going to load essentially six bugs, because <laughs> it's three in each bottle. So it's going to be, uh, well, three bugs is 9FO, so let's just add two of those. So add 9F0 and add another 9F0. And now let's add two fish. So it's going to load the actor file for the fish, which is uh, 2140. And it's going to add two fish, and each fish is 280. And then we want to add, let's add the actor file for the bomb chew. So that's down here, 16D0. And finally, let's add the bomb, which is 230. And it gets us, sure enough, to the value we want. Um, two problems here that you may have noticed is that I mentioned using the chew actor file, but I didn't actually use any chews. So how do we get the actor file to load without pulling a bum chew out? Um, the second one is that I mentioned that I want to spawn in a bomb, but I didn't mention adding the bomb actor file. Uh, luckily, the for bombs, for some reason the actor file always loads very late in memory, like towards the end, like it's allocated at the end of memory, so it's never going to get in the way and it's not going to shift things because it'll always be at the end. So it's just the actor instance which is at this earlier point in memory. Um, but for the bomb chew thing of how do we get the bomb chew actor file but not have any bomb chews, that kind of is tricky. Um, and so the way I solve that um, is that I use what I do is I uh, I pull out a bomb chew at the very start before I've even started loading the second room I pull out a bomb chew which is going to put the bomb chew here at the end of the room 
it's going to sorry it's going to put the bomb chew active file at the very end of the room and then the bomb chew is going to be directly after the active file and then what i do is i go into the room so everything loads after that bomb chew and that bomb chew active file and then i dump a bunch of other stuff so that's going to appear at the end of the second room because it can't fill up the space that the first room's taking it can't fill up the space the second room's taking so it puts it at the very end and then finally the last thing I do after dumping a bunch of fish and bugs and stuff is I release another bomb chew and because the first bomb chew was already loaded the actor file is gonna just be kept in the same place it was which is actually sandwiched between these rooms um, whereas the bomb chew itself, the, the last one I spawned in is gonna be right at the end and then the first bomb chew I released is going to have been despawned, so the active file is still going to be up there, but there's not going to be any uh, bomb chew actors up there. And so then when I come back into the first room and the second room deloads, what I'm going to have is all the stuff of the first room, then the actor file is, of the bomb chew is going to be directly after the first room, and then there's going to be another bomb chew, but it's going to be like super far away in memory. It's going to be pushed a lot further forward because remember I loaded it really far away. So let's, let's just go through that real quick with the macro and I'm going to show you piece by piece what's going on here. So I load in the room with Ferrari's wind which makes sure that all this stuff is loaded as far in you know early in memory with no gaps and then I ground jump up here and the first thing I'm going to do as I said is drop some chews. So I drop two chews, this produces an actor file for the bomb chew, which is 00DA, and then the two bomb chew instances. And then I'm going to drop some fish, which is going to spawn. Oh, sorry, yeah, I forgot to mention. What I did there after pulling the bomb chews is I walked forward, which loaded the second room, um, as I explained in the explanation earlier. So actually, the second room loaded, so there's a lot more stuff here now because both the first room and the second room's loaded. And then I dumped out my fish. So this is the actor file for the fish, which loaded at the end of the second room. And this is the actor instance of the fish. So the, all this stuff is loading at the end of the second room, like quite far ahead in memory. Uh, dump another fish. Uh, oh, sorry, I dumped bugs there. So there's the actor file for the bugs, and three more actor files for the bugs. I do some more bugs and then I pull out a bomb chew. So it's exactly what I said. Uh, I make sure that I'm in the second room or in the loading plane so both rooms are loaded then I spawn a fish and a bunch of bugs and like a bunch of other stuff and then I pull out a chew. So what we've got here now is the actor file for the chew is at this 1E7 address essentially right at the end of the first room and the actor instance is at this 1F9 business very very far away in fact it's so far away that it's not going to mess with any of the second room loading it's it's loaded after the second room so now at this point we finally have a situation where we've got the actor file for the bomb chew loaded but there's no bomb chews themselves messing things up um, so with that we can dump our bombs and two fish and two bugs so the first thing I do is load a bomb and then a bug so here's the actor instance for the bomb here's the actor file for the bug Oh, for the fish, sorry. Here's the actor instance for the fish. Another one comes along. We've got another fish. And we're going to load the actor file for the bugs and then three bugs now. So let's have a look at that. There's the actor file for the bugs and three more bugs. And then three more bugs. I'm going to pause it. Um, and so what I did there was I pulled out another bomb. I didn't mention that other bomb in the setup. Uh, and actually what it's doing is not adding more space. Once we've dropped those two fish, two bugs and that one bomb, we'd filled up the right amount of space. But unfortunately, towards the end of the very last animation, the first fish despawned, which left a hole. Um, it would have left a hole here, this where this first fish was, because it despawned. And that hole is bad, we don't want a hole, because when we went go into the second room, if actors in the second room see that hole, they're going to want to try and fill it, and that's going to mess with everything. We don't want that to happen, essentially. So I plug the hole <laughs> by pulling out a bomb. And 
So what we do, what we end up with is a gap of 280, which is the size of fish. The fish despawns, so we've got a gap of 280. I pull out a bomb, and it sees this gap, and it spawns in the gap, because the bomb has a size of 230. Obviously there is still a gap of 5-0 left, but luckily nothing in the second room is that small, so nothing was, is going to load in. Um, and so we have preserved our 7-8-7-0 amount of stuff <laughs> filling up the gap between these two rooms. And then once that's happened, I just let the first room unload, let all the stuff unload, and you can actually already see that by doing that I've moved the... Uh, position of the bush to be at 1F0360, oh sorry, 1F0630, which is the position we wanted it to be in. Uh, now I just do some shenanigans to get the bush up to the right position. A bunch of super slide teleports. If you haven't seen this trick before, um, you can pick up these regrowable grass bushes after they've been broken, <laughs> and Link just kind of is able to move their position around. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, and then I do like a few super slide teleports. But the the thing is you can only actually move these things around before they've fully grown back. So I get to this position. I do another thing here where I break the grass while picking it up. Then I get it in position. And I need to do a super slide off this grass bush so that Link is about to pick up what he thinks is the bush, and it needs to be off camera, so I'm I'm using uh, inverted camera here. So what happens is I use inverted camera, which uh, and when I super slide off the bush, so the bush is off camera, so it unloads or it doesn't unload. Sorry, it just is not graphically updating anymore, and a few other of its variables are not updating anymore, which means that. The variable that would normally tell Link you can't pick this up is not updating anymore after you go through the loading zone. Anyway, that's a minor point. The point is it has to be off camera when you go through the loading zone. And now Link is grabbing a thing. We're back in the first room. Link's grabbing something. His grabbing pointer is pointing at what used to be the bush, but now when we go back into the room, it's going to be pointing at the part of the chest, and we're going to change the chest contents. Um, so that's what's happened here. I shield in the first frame, the second room loads, um, and the reason I do that is because the value we're writing to the chest contents is actually very finicky and precise, um, and what happens is there's a particular byte within the values that we're updating that has to be an exact value, <laughs> um, and that value fluctuates a lot with position of link, so <laughs> it's essentially just a 1 in 256 chance of getting the right thing. Um, obviously with a setup, if we made a setup for this, it could be consistent. It's not actually RNG, it's just, you know, the th these things fluctuate so much that it feels random. But if you had a setup, it would be consistent every time. And so that's what I do. I shield drop on the first frame, which updates the value of the chest contents exactly once. Um, because if I updated it multiple times, there's essentially more of a chance that the value is not going to be the right value for that byte and then the game's going to crash or the chest is going to disappear. So just doing it on the first frame, frame means you only have to worry about updating once and you only, you know, you, as long as it's right on the first frame then that's that's fine. And we get the prescription and all is well. <laughs> and uh, I hope this video explains some things. So thanks for watching.